There we go. We have Casa OS running on our Windows PC. Let's just hop into the App Store. We're gonna search for image. So let's hit install. I'm just gonna take five of these and let's refresh that. And they have this dude again. All right, let's configure some external access, shall we? Let's go to the App Store and let's just type in Carol Scale. Boom, install. Okay, and it's working. So let's log in. And boom, I'm into my image instance right here. So, however, let's try to get a Cloudflare tunnel set up. So, okay, we're just gonna enter in that token and then hit save. And boom, we're publicly accessible. Let's see if we can set up backups real quick. So I'm gonna install Copia. Okay, so that created a snapshot. We can take a look at it. So here's our first snapshot. And now if I ever need to restore image, I can do that from... Hey guys, in this video, we are gonna be installing image on Casa OS directly on your Windows PC. So we're gonna be doing this on WSL, which is Windows subsystem for Linux which basically means that we're just gonna be running an Ubuntu server on our Windows PC. And then we're gonna just copy and paste the command to install Casa OS. And that's gonna give us a whole app store for Docker apps. And then we're just gonna search that app store for image, hit install, and then we've got image up and running. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's open up a terminal and let's just go ahead and check what our uh, WSL instances are currently. So I have a Docker desktop and Docker desktop data, which if you have installed Docker desktop, you'll likely see both of these. What I wanna do is just run um, a dedicated server to install Casa OS on, which we will then use to install whatever other self-hosted applications we want to. So to do that, we're gonna use the WSL install flag and then I want to go ahead and specify the distribution so I'm going to do dash d for distribution and then we'll do Ubuntu. Okay we're going to create a user account so we'll just do Thomas and then a password and then you can see that we have Ubuntu running. So right now I'm in the Ubuntu terminal. Let's go ahead and cd to root and we can see you know, we have all of the directories that we could expect with a Ubuntu distribution. So we have a Linux server up and running just like that in our Windows PC. Let's install Casa OS, okay? And we'll just go to the home page here because we just need to basically run this curl command. So let's copy that, hop back into the terminal, paste that in there. Boom, okay. Casa OS is installed. So let's grab that IP address. There we go. We have Casa OS running on our Windows PC. So let's go to go and let's create an account. We're good to go. Okay. Let's just hop into the app store and we're gonna search for an app. We're gonna search for image. I wanna have just the regular image installation. So let's hit install. Okay, this is gonna say that we're gonna run it on port 2283, which is the default. So you can see up here that we have the four containers. Now, if you're familiar with image installation with Docker, you have four containers in your stack. You've got the image server, the database, the machine learning, and the redisk container. If we hop over to image server, we can see that we've got this port open and binded. So host 2283 to the container 2283. And then Casa OS generally will default bind mounted volumes to the data slash app data folder. And then in this case, this will be image and then we'll have that upload right there. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that for our upload. And then we can see those environmental variables that are set, the image database name, host name. So if you do change any of these, just make sure that you change them on the database side as well. So for example, the database password, Casa OS, hop over to database, and we see that the Postgres password is Casa OS. The database is also gonna be bind mounted to the PG data directory within our image data so we'll check this out when we upload some images i can show you where that's located okay otherwise i'm just gonna stick with the defaults here this is fine i'm gonna run it on uh, 2283 
and let's just hit install. I already have 2283 running with my Docker desktop image instance, which I've used for some demos. So for Casa OS running on here, let's just run this on 2284 and then let's hit install. Okay, so that has installed image. Let me just click on it to open it up in a new tab. So getting started, let's set this up and then password. And then right off the bat, you can see that we're actually not using the latest version. And that's to be expected that the third party tool like Cos OS is gonna lag just slightly on the latest server versions. So no worries about that. You're not really gonna have any changes to where your mobile app isn't working. Well, let's set the theme, gonna accept all the defaults here. Okay, let's add a couple photos. Okay, I have some photos from this IMDB database. I'm just gonna take five of these and throw these in here. And these have successfully uploaded. Let's refresh that and they have this dude again. <laughs> I keep using these same five photos. Uh, that's great, so image is working. So let's see where those uploads are located, right? So go to image server and this is basically, this is where it's gonna be at. So let's see what that looks like, okay? So we're gonna go to the data directory. Do an ls, you can see that data. So let's cd into data. And then you can see the app data. So let's cd into app data. And then we see that application right there, which is the big bear image. So cd big bear image. And then we have our pg data. That's our binded persisted mount for the database and then the upload folder which is the binded uh, persisted mount of the server here so that's the upload right here all right let's configure some external access shall we let's go to the app store and let's just type in tail scale boom install okay so i think we're going to need to set this auth key right here. So let's grab an authentication key so that the Tailscale app can authenticate for the first time. So hop over to Tailscale and log in. Okay, we're gonna create a one-time use authentication key here. Let's just set this to expire in one day and generate this key. Go ahead and copy that guy. And then in COS OS, I don't really see why this would need to be false, so I'm gonna change that to true, and then let's paste in this auth key here, and let's hit save. And then boom, we have our big bear tail scale here. Okay, so let's open up image on my mobile app. Okay, let's make sure I'm connected on tail scale. Okay, I am, and let's copy that tail scale IP address. I'm gonna copy that guy, open up image, and then we're gonna paste that in there. And then this was running on 2284, right? 2284. Next, I'm actually having difficulty getting the Tailscale app to work the way I want to. So I'm gonna just un uninstall the app and then I'm just gonna install Tailscale on the server like I normally would. It's just a one command anyways. So let's go ahead and uninstall it. Okay, we can go ahead and remove this machine. And let's see if we have better luck just basically adding this as a Linux server. Set this to one day, and then we're gonna generate the install script. Okay, so let's just install Tailscale directly onto our Ubuntu server. Let's try that. Okay, I'm just gonna run sudo tailscale up. Let's go back to machines. Okay, so now this time it's calling it wild dell one, but I can see that it's a Linux right here. So let's copy this. Okay, so now that's working, so that's good. Okay, let's hop over to my phone here, and I'm gonna open up Tailscale, go down to my wild Dell one copy IP address, and then, and then let's paste that in here. We're gonna go to port 2284. Okay, and it's working, so let's log in. And boom, I'm into my image instance right here. So, pretty cool. If you know what I needed to do to get the app the Tailscale app to work on COS OS, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm fine with just installing it onto the Ubuntu server itself. However, let's try to get a Cloudflare tunnel set up. So we've got our mobile app working. Uh, that's great. 
But what if we want to access image from uh, the public, you know, from a public URL? Let's go to the App Store and let's type in Cloud Flared. Uh, let's just try doing the Cloud Flared app here. Okay, we've got that. Okay, so we just need to go create our tunnel in Cloudflare. Let's go to Cloudflare. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. Cloudflare is a free service and we can create tunnels into our network. Let's go to Zero Trust, go to Networks, Tunnels. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new tunnel. This is gonna be Cloudflare. Tunnel name, I'm gonna call this Casa OS on WSL. Hit Save Tunnel. Okay, then I'm gonna copy this. Okay, we're just gonna enter in that token and then hit save. So let's hit start and let's return. And we can see that we're connected here. Okay, let's hit next. And then let's enter in a subdomain, let's do image dash Casa OS, do wildebeest media type HTTP. And then we're gonna grab that IP address and this is gonna be 2284 is what I'm running it on. Don't need that part. Hit save tunnel. Okay, so now let's see if I can access this from the web and boom, we're publicly accessible to our image instance running on Casa OS. Now, what else could we do? Let's go to the app store and let's search for Copia. Okay, let's, let's see if we can set up backups real quick. So I'm gonna install Copia. So Copia is okay. Okay, so within the container, we're gonna have the path for a Copia repository. But on the host, we want this actually, I wanna bind mount this to uh, the C drive. So we can do this wherever we want. I'll just do it right on the C drive for simplicity. So let's do a new folder and I'll just call it Copia. And then let's see if we can access that from within WSL. Uh, let's CD to the root and then let's go into mount and LS and then we can see the drives here. So let's CD into C list. Okay, and then we can see the Copia directory. So let's just CD into that. Okay, so this is where I want that repository to actually be located. So let's copy that. And then let's paste that right there. And then we want to have access to our image uh, bind mounts so that we can save off and back up our assets there. So like you might want to do this to like a D drive or an E drive if you have, you know, like a larger um, hard drive connected to your computer. I'll just do it to the C drive for simplicity here. So let's save that. And then I do want to come back to image. Let's see where we have that bind mount. Okay, so that is here. So let's just give Copia access to this directory, this upload directory. This is where all the assets are located, right? So go back to Copia. I'm going to go to settings and then let's create one more volume here. So this is going to be that image upload. And then within the container, I'm just going to call it image like that. Okay, so let's open up Copia. And this is running on HTTPS with Copia username and password. Did I specify that? Yep, Casa OS, Casa OS. All right, we're in Copia. So let's go to repository, we're already there. And then we're gonna choose local directory. That's gonna be that repository path that we configured within the Docker container. So hit next. And then we can encrypt the uh, contents of the repository. So just make sure you remember this in case you wanna be able to restore it later and hit create repository. All right, now let's create a snapshot of our uh, image instance. So let's go new snapshot. And then this is that path that we configured. So this is just image like that. And just to make sure that it's set up, we can go ahead and hit estimate like that. So it it does have the, uh, the files that we've uploaded. Um, so the 25 files, 13 megabytes, snapshot frequency, 
And let's get a snapshot retention. And we'll say that we'll retain 10 snapshots. Again, this doesn't really need to be like an hourly thing. So I'll just do daily snapshots. Let's say, I'll just do the past three days, three weeks, three months, and then one annual snapshot. So let's do that. Hit estimate. On the scheduling, I will set this to 3 a.m. And then let's go ahead and hit snapshot now. Okay, so that created a snapshot. We can take a look at it. So here's our first snapshot. And then we can see all of the all the directories uh, in that image uh, bind mount. Let's open up my file explorer, go to C copia. And here is that copia repository. So we got snapshots of our image assets, as well as the backup database dumps that image does automatically for us. And now if I ever need to restore uh, image because my C drive goes down, um, I can do that from, well, so I save this on the C drive, but let's say you save the Copia repository to a different drive. Now you can restore image from that Copia. So pretty damn awesome. All right, guys, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more stuff like this. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any feedback, uh, if you know what I did wrong with the uh, tail scale uh, app within COS OS. Again, I'm fine with just installing Tailscale directly onto the Ubuntu server, and that seems to be working just fine. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks for watching.